Hi guys. Um, good day everyone and I hope that everyone is doing fine despite of the medical crisis that we're facing right now and for today we shall be discussing um, trematodes. So trematodes under the phylum Platyhelminthes. So trematodes are commonly known as fluke. So if you will be looking at adult flukes, you'll notice that they are leaf-like okay, and dorsoventrally flattened and you will notice that there are also two types of suckers. Okay, this one is the oral sucker. So oral sucker is the responsible for, it's, it's like the digestive opening and the other one is the ventral sucker. So this is the common ventral sucker and it is important for the attachment. Most of the uh, trematodes or some of the trematodes are said to be hermaphroditic. So when you say hermaphroditic, they're said to be monoecious because um, both adult male and female reproductive organs are found in a single adult. On the other hand, cystosomes are actually different from the other trematodes because cystosomes have a separate adult male and female and they are said to be the issues. Okay, so trematodes uh, mostly inhabit small intestine but um, you would see later on that there are some types of trematodes that may inhabit livers and lungs as well, aside from the intestine. So trematodes would generally require, require at least one intermediate host, particularly for the cystosomes. But for the for the monoecious trematodes, um, they would require two intermediate hosts. So human infections occur by ingestion of metasarcaria. Metasarcaria is considered to be as the infective stage for the monoish uh, for the sorry ah uh, okay so I'm sorry for that interruption so um uh, usually um the issues trematodes um uh, would have cercaria as the infective stage but for monoecious trematodes. Uh, Metasarcaria is considered to be as the infective stage. So most infections are seen in people from East Asia, Africa, South America, and some areas of the Caribbean. So Philippines, by the way, is not exempted. So for the general rules, um, all trematodes are hermaphroditic. Well, again, except for the cystosomes. Um, eggs are operculated. So when you say operculum, there is an opening. So monoecious trematodes would require two intermediate hosts and the infective stage is considered to be as the metasericaria. So in order for you to get infected, you have to consume or contaminated food with the infective stage, which is the metasericaria. So if you'll be looking at the morphology, they are leaf-like, tongue shape and would require two intermediate hosts. So the definitive hosts are vertebrates such as humans. So we are the one that harbors the that harbor the adult stage. So there are two types of intermediate hosts. The primary intermediate host would harbor the early larval stages of parasites. So most of these um most of these uh, intermediate hosts are snails, okay, mollusks. And then the secondary intermediate host would harbor the infective stage to human. So mostly of these secondary intermediate hosts would harbor metasarcaria. It could be fish or it could be crabs or it could be another snail. So we can classify um, nematodes, uh, sorry, trematodes according to habitat. So um, there are actually... Um, three um, species of cystosoma and they uh, inhabit the portal bloodstream or the blood vessels. So, cystosoma japonicum, cystosoma hematobium, and cystosoma mansonae. Okay, so uh, for you, you have to remember our, wait, uh, trying to figure out how to write the 
Okay. Remember, um, Mr. Yuji. Okay? What do you mean by Mr. Yuji? Mr. You. It's quite. I don't have a mouse, so please bear with me. Okay. M stands for Mansonai and R stands for Rectum. It means that Sistosoma Mansonai resides at the portal bloodstream of the rectum. Okay? H for hematovium and U for urinary. So it means that um, Sistosoma hematovium um, reside at the reside at the urinary portal bloodstream. J for J for japonicum and I for intestine. So it means that Sistosoma japonicum resides at the portal bloodstream of the intestine. Okay. Hey. And of, of course, we also have the lung flu. Okay, so Paragonimus westermani. And liver and bile passages or the liver flu. We have the fasciola hepatica, um, Clonorchis sinensis, and Opostorchis phalenius. Uh, fasciola hepatica is the sheep's liver flu. Clonorchis sinensis is the Chinese liver flu. So, kind of racist. And then Opostorchis phalenius is the cat liver flu. And for the intestinal flu, we have the Fasciolopsis busti. Uh, and then Echinostoma ilocanum, so obviously comes from, origi first originated uh, in Ilocos. And then Heterophys heterophy. Heterophys heterophy is considered to be as the smallest but the deadliest type of fluke worm. And we can also classify them according to the types of eggs that recovered. So whenever there is a miracidium, miracidium is the larva inside the egg and it is the one that is ciliated. Like coracidium in Diphilobotrium latum, miracidium is also ciliated so that it can swim once the egg hatch in fresh water. Okay, so we have the Lacanorchis, Opistorchis, Cystosoma, and the Heterophys. Now, those that are those parasites that lay immature eggs, which means that they do not have any Miracidium at all, so this would include Paragonimus, Fasciola, Echinostoma, and Fasciolopsis. Okay, so general life cycle. Uh huh. Um, adult flu usually uh, would eliminate or would produce egg, and then egg should come into contact with water. Okay, so mirasidium um uh, will be released. It's the first larval stage of flu, so it's piriform in shape, and as what I've told you, it is ciliated. So it will swim in water and will penetrate the first intermediate host which is the snail. And then, inside the snail, Mirosidium matures into sporocyst. And then sporocyst into the redia. And then, it's considered as the first generation. Eventually, um, the redia, um, after second generation, becomes cercaria. It will leave the body of the snail through birth bore. And then, cercaria will finally find the second intermediate host, which could be a freshwater fish, crustacean, or another snail. And then, or sometimes in plants, okay, such as fresh, uh, such as um, water lily, okay? And then, after that, um, the metacercaria uh, will mature in the, sec uh, metacercaria will be acquired by ingestion by human host, okay? Especially, if, for example, we cook the, uh, we, we consume the fish insufficiently cooked, okay, or crab insufficiently cooked, or plants insufficiently cooked. So, okay, so, so definitive host could be vertebrates so, or, or humans. So when you say vertebrate, this could be cattle because um, sheep, because they tend to consume plants 
coming from the fresh water. Okay. So therefore, um, the life stages of flukes are divided into several stages. We have the egg, which could be embryonated with neurocidium or an, an unembryonated without neurocidium and then larvae. So larvae could be neurocidium, sporosis, redia, okay, cercaria or cystosomolum for cystosoma and then metacercaria. Take note, for cystosoma, it won't reach the metacercaria because cystosoma would only require one intermediate host. Okay? Eventually, after metacercaria, it becomes adult to the definitive, inside the definitive host. Except for cystosoma because in cystosoma, there is no metacercaria. Okay. There. So, in cystosoma, there are two sporosis stage. Okay? Two sporosis stage and there's no radia. For echinostoma, on the other hand, echinostoma ilocanum, for example, there are two radial generation, but there's no sporosis. So, definitive host is human or any vertebrate host. Okay, so let us discuss um, some of the important species. So, we have the liver fluke. Um, liver fluke is also known as also known as the uh, clonorchisinensis or clonorchisinensis or the Chinese liver fluke. Intestinal fluke would include Fasciolopsis buski, Paragonimus westermani. This one is very important, um, very significant because here in the Philippines, it is mostly misdiagnosed as tuberculosis. And of course, we have the blood fluke. Okay, so if we will be looking at the morphology of the adult worm, Okay, they are flattened and leaf-like, and then you have the oral sucker, and then the ventral sucker, and then the body wall is made up of musculotegumental sac. Okay, the parenchyma, parenchy parenchyma is the structure between the body wall and the internal organs. So somewhere here, okay, it is made up of connective tissue fibers, cells, and space in between them. Okay. So, if the oral sucker is here, so the ventral sucker would be here. Okay? And there you go. So, oral sucker, ventral sucker. Okay? So, hmm? uh, the digestive tract is not intact, which means that there is no anal opening. Okay? Only secum is present. And then the reproductive system is hermaphrodite meaning they have male and female reproductive organs except for the cystosomes and they also have a comp uh, they also have a muscular system nervous system and even excretory system so the eggs the size of course is divergent depending on the species so it could be described as ovoid or some of them are operculated except for that of the cystosoma so the content the force uh, you have the ovium Lying within the ovium, lining the ovium are the vitellin cells, and if the eggs are mature, so you'll expect me receive you inside. Okay, so let's discuss these parasites one by one. Uh, first, we have uh, Fasciolopsis buski. Um, it is considered as the largest intestinal fluke of humans and pig, so that's why. Its nickname is giant intestinal flu. So, how do we get Fasciolopsis buski? Um, Fasciolopsis, Fasciolopsis buski uh, may be acquired through the ingestion of metacercaria found on aquatic vegetation. Example, Kong Kong. Okay? Clinical signs, uh, most of the time, the patients are asymptomatic. But in some cases, you would see rashes or intestinal discomfort. Um, can it damage human? Um, uh, very low or minor. So most of the damages would, would focus on small intestine no causal damage. The prevalent is very high, uh, particularly in Oriental and Asian countries, particularly in tropics. So we can diagnose it by finding eggs in fecal sedimentation and we can treat the infection through praziquantel and niclosamine. So this is the appearance of the ova of Fasciolopsis buski. 
So it's considered to be as the biggest ova. It's ovoid and it has a minute operculum here. The germ cell inclusions are found here and it's large, measuring between 130 to 140. So this could be 130 to 140. Oh, sorry. And then um, 80 to 85 microns. It is unembryonated and the challenge is once you find it under the microscope, it's quite difficult to distinguish this from fasciola hepatica or fasciola, uh, fasciola gigantica. So we usually say um, uh, fasciolopsis or fasciola ova. So medyo mahirap no? I-speciate. So the adult has a blunt anterior it doesn't have a shoulder because you will notice later on that some of the trematodes would have shoulder on it. So dorsal ventrally flattened and the intestinal cica are unbranched. But it has a large acetabulum. And the acetabulum is, um, is actually large acetabulum than oral sucker. So if this is the oral sucker, the acetabulum is much larger. Okay, so there are two testes, okay, the testes are dendritic, so when you say dendritic, it means that it is branch, and they are arranged in tandem in the posterior half of the body. The ovary is also branch, it's right to the midline. Okay, so if we will be looking at the intermediate host, oh, sorry, of the life cycle, um, you would notice that these are these species are the possible intermediate hosts, um, segmentina, hippotis, planorbis, and gyrolus. These are all snail genera. Okay, so life cycle begins when someone defecates in the soil. So, uh, sorry, in in fresh water. Okay, so once you defecate in in fresh water. So the egg becomes embryonated in water and eventually it will hatch releasing the myracidium. Myracidium will penetrate the snail. So inside this particular snail, we have the so-called intramolluscan stages. So this include development into sporosis, radia, and cercaria. And eventually, cercaria will leave the snail and then metacercaria, it becomes metacercaria. It will be insisted into aquatic vegetation so humans pigs may um, acquire the infection by ingesting the water vegetation insufficiently cooked there it will mature in the duodenum of the intestine okay so, so what are the aquatic plants so it could be um water caltrops water chestnut kang kong most more most common in the philippines and then lotus Okay, so for the pathology, uh, pathology may be classified as traumatic, obstructive, or toxic. Traumatic in such a way is, is uh, traumatic because of the fact that the worm is big in terms of size, so it may cause um, intestinal damage, such as ulceration at the site of attachment, epigastric pain with diarrhea or nausea, slight anemia, and eosinophilia. Okay, so lab diagnosis would be by direct fecal smear or catocats, which means that you'll be able to observe egg or ova in that particular smear. So is it common here in the Philippines? It says here, cases in the Philippines are acquired abroad. So hindi talaga siya endemic in the Philippines, but it is endemic in countries such as Southeast Asia, although the Philippines is part of Southeast Asia. China, Korea, and India. Okay, so treatment. Um, Praziguantel is given in three doses of 25 milligrams per kilogram over one day. And to prevent us from getting infected with Fasciolopsis buski, we have to soak aquatic plants in water. Soaking of aquatic plants in water should be avoided. Okay, because um, fresh water is where we can find the Miracidium. Prolonging of time between harvest and consumption. And then, we have to wash or boil plants. Protect untreated humans or pigs excreta of the swamp. 
okay from so do not do not defecate in fresh water okay or ponds where aquatic plants are being cultivated okay so that's about it now let's proceed to the liver fluke okay so liver fluke um is said to be the parasite of biliary passages okay uh, it can cause chronorchiasis or the chinese liver fluke or the oriental liver fluke unfortunately once infected the lifespan of the parasite is between 20 to 35 years so almost half of the of your life um, could be infected with clonorchicinesis if this parasite is not treated properly um just like ordinary fluke worm um the adult worm is the size and shape is like the seed of the sunflower wow okay um there are also two oral suck there are also two oral suckers uh two suckers one oral and the other one is ventral uh two dendritic testes that lies in tandem to each other at the posterior region okay so this is how it looks like like the seed of the sunflower okay so these are the first intermediate host and then the second intermediate host so freshwater fish so i think this one is oh is this a lobster or a crayfish okay so one so you have the oral sucker and then the ventral sucker then the ovary and then testes in tandem okay so another example of the adult Clonorchisinensis. Okay, so this is the cross section of Clonorchisinensis adult in hepatic bile duct. So, uh, the egg of uh, Clonorchisinensis is the smallest. It, it it appears like sesame seed or a bulb, and the color is yellowish brown. The operculum is distinct and it has shoulder or knob and it may contain mirrors in June. Yeah. So one of the smallest ova. Okay, so clonorchisinensis. So these are small operculated egg sizes between twenty seven to thirty five microns and and the operculum at the smaller end of the egg is convex and rest on visible shoulder it is as if there is a shoulder here uh, or a small knob like hook like protrusion is often visible so the knob like protrusion in the shoulder the mirosidium this is the mirosidium another mirosidium okay is visible inside the egg okay so if you will be looking at the definitive host First intermediate hosts are Bulinus species, Aloncina, um, Parophosar, and Bithynia. Okay, so again, um, the cycle happens when someone defecates in fresh water and passing out embryonated egg. So snail will ingest um, the entire ova, releasing the Mirasiju, Sporosis, Radiance, Recaria. So again, these are the intramolluscan stage. Sarcaria will finally leave the snail and then it will now penetrate or insist in the skin of or flesh of the freshwater fish because um, the freshwater will ingest the Sarcaria. Okay, so what could be the second intermediate host? It could be a crayfish or a cyprinoid fish. So um if you notice the life cycle of of trematodes are almost the same so that's why we have the so-called um the model of pattern of trematodes so saan lang nagkakaiba um definitive host of course human being reservoir could be dogs or cats because sometimes dog or cats would steal our fish and of course they will not, they won't cook it okay and they would reside in hepatic bile duct and from there eggs will be discharged within or in the feces um hatching in the in the whole small intestine 
um, is the reason why eventually this particular parasite will grow as adult in the small intestine. So there are two intermediate hosts, snails and freshwater fish. And then there are also two second ge two generations of asexual proliferation. Infective stage is metacercarin fish, and we can get it by consuming the fish insufficiently cooked. Pathogenesis is due to the adult worm. So the mechanical sucking of the adult worm may cause, of course, trauma. And chemical mechanism would be by excretion, secretions, and metabolites of the worm. And of course, biological means we are being, our nutrition is deprived because the worm is competing for the nutrients that we are supposed to absorb in the small intestine. So, pathological process would include um, there would be inflammation, proliferation, thickening, occlusion, and eventually um, there would be extensive involvement or fibrosis of the liver. Um, the infection is called clonorchiasis. Um, it will start as um, light infection and may cause mild symptoms, um, light leukocytosis or and eosinophilia. And since liver is affected, so John this function is a uh, liver function is impaired. So John this is the yellowish discoloration of the skin. As regards to the clinical manifestation, the acute stage is characterized by allergic reaction and the chronic stage is characterized by functional impairment of liver so complications such as cholangitis cholecystitis bilstone and jaundice would appear and the advanced stage would be portal cirrhosis and malignancy lab diagnosis so it could be diagnosed by means of examination of eggs in feces Okay, or by cement sedimentation method, du duodenal aspiration and immunologic means detection of antibody or antigen by means of um, serologic techniques such as the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay or ELISA. Distribution, um, this could be found in China, so Chinese liver fluke, South Korea and Japan. So it says here that 24 provinces in China, China talaga oh, are actually um uh is in the are uh, the the not virus but the parasite is endemic in 24 provinces in China particularly in Guangdong province not in Wuhan okay, Guangdong province wherein five million people are are said to be infected China so there's another species of of clonorchis or uh, or another species of fluke that is very much uh, related to clonorchis, that is Opistorchis viverini. Okay, so uh, this is Thailand, so somewhere in Laos or Cambodia. Sorry, I'm poor in geography. At any rate, it says here that um, the endemic factor is due to the presence of wild carnivores like cats, dogs. Okay. And then intermediate host, the same water field. So mode of fish breeding is is an important um, factor. Okay, dining habit and customs. Yes, because um, if you'll be cooking the fish properly, so there's no way for you to get infected. Other definitive hosts would include cat, dogs, and even hogs and ducks. So. To control, we have to cure the patients and the carrier with praziquantel. We can control also the reservoir hose and carry out scientific fish breeding. Hygienic education means that we have to educate the public not to eat raw or undercooked fishes. Okay, Opistorchis filinus um, is the cat liver fluke okay. uh, found in Europe. USSR, formerly USSR, now Russia. Diseases, the disease is called opistorchiasis. The first and second intermediate host is the same as clonorchis, sinensis. And other definitive hosts would include, would include dog, hogs, and foxes. 
So, what's the difference between the Clonarchis and Opistarchis? First, if you'll be looking at the shape, um, Clonarchis is spatulated. So, somewhat pointed at the anterior part. Spatulate, parang kutsara. Pointed at the anterior part. Whereas, Opistorchis is lancet shape. So, comparing the sucker, Clonarchis has a bigger or larger oral sucker than its ventral sucker. But in Opistorchis, it's the same. Vitellaria. So, Vitellaria is the one that can provide um, yolk for eggs of parasites. And it's found at the mid part of the worm, it's granular for clonarchis, for apistorchis is transverse. Testis is dendritic for clonarchis, so it means it's branch like, but for apistorchis it is lobe. Uterus is coiled for clonarchis, but it is branch also, uh, I mean, branch in apistorchis. But eggs are similar, appears like the old fashioned electric valve. Okay, moving on. Uh, let us discuss now um, the lang fluke. Okay, so the lang fluke would include um, the genus Paragonimus. Um, it is a zoonotic parasite, which means it can cause zoonosis. And an, um, animal infection is actually more common than human infection. Um, there are two major species in China. Okay, so... Paragonimus is the oriental lung fluke. Um, Paragonimiasis is the disease or the infection, and it is characterized by hemoptysis. So, ectopic site means outside the lungs. It can be find it can be found in the brain, abdomen, and in muscle. So, to diagnose it, um, the one that we collect, the the the, the sample that we're collecting here is a sputum. Uh, which should be digested with 3% sodium hydroxide so that the mucus uh, would be dissolved. Uh, morphology, you'd be able to find a coffee bean shaped parasite, such as this one. So, the adult worm is characterized by a body tick, almost half piece size of a bean grain. The tegument is spinous, and you also have the Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just, uh, it's 12.20, <laughs> 12.00, so I'm sleepy. But anyway, um, the oral sucker is here, and here's the ventral sucker. And there is also a parallel arrangement of reproductive organ. So at the posterior part, you'll find the lobular testis. At the anterior part, you'll find the lobular ovary and the tooth. So, this is the cross section of the lung that contains um, Paragonimus westermani. So, if you will be looking at the egg, um, it is not as big as Fasciolopsis, but not as small as Clonurchis. So, medium size. Uh, it appears like a water pot, okay, golden yellow, distinctive and wide operculum, as you can see here. The, there is also a abo. Percular thickening, okay, and it contains one germ cell and several yolk cells. So, um, the first intermediate host is our is an is a snail, Brosia asperata, and fresh mountain crab, Sundatelfusa filipina. So, so kapag kinilawen yung crab. Um, that's usually the reason why people get infected. Okay? So, an embryonated ova is passed in fresh water, becomes embryonated once it has come into contact with water, and it will hatch, releasing myrosidium. Myrosidium penetrates the snails, and there you'll have the intramolluscan stages. So, it will become sporosis, radia, and cercaria. Cercaria will leave the snail and the second intermediate host such as the um, fresh mountain crab will ingest the cercaria and inside the fresh mountain crab it becomes metacercaria. Humans consume the second intermediate host insufficiently cooked and that's the reason why humans get infected with paragonus. So another example of the first intermediate host. 
Okay, so definitive host, humans, reservoir could be any other carnivorous animals that has consumed the crustaceans and adult resides in the lungs and other ectopic sites. So intermediate hosts are the Melania snails. The second intermediate host could either be stream crabs or crayfish. Infective stage is Metasericaria. Infective mode is oral route. If you'll be able to consume um, the second intermediate host. Uh, paratenic host could be swine. Okay. And then uh, the reason why I'm sorry. <laughs> the reason why um Okay, Antoken. Okay, Antoken. So the reason why um there is uh preponderance of fresh mountain crab is migration and pre adult wandering. So ectopic parasitism is quite dangerous because it means that infections may be seen at the cerebral or abdominal part. So eggs are discharged with sputum and feces and there are three generations of asexual multiplication. Okay, so this is the metasericaria found in fresh mountain crab. Stages, uh, stage take responsibility, adult and pre-adult. So the pathologic process, um, there would be uh, abscess, cystic, and scar formation stage. So what are the symptoms of paragonomiasis? Um, there would be coughing and hemoptysis, which means that you'll cough out blood, sputum with blood. So that's why almost the same as TB, uh, misdiagnosed as TB. Sputum with foul fish odor and rusty brown, which is malansa. And patient would experience chest pain. So lab diagnosis, stool and sputum. And it is not airborne. So there are four clinical types. So this include um, thoracic, which means that um, it is pulmonary, so characterized by chest pain, coughing, and blood thin sputum or hemoptysis. Abdominal means it's hepatic. So hepatomegaly means that your liver will be enlarged. Cranial, it's an ectopic infection. So you develop busy headache and epilepsy. Musculocutaneous type, um, it is because of the migratable subskin nodule. Uh, ano yung nag-migrate? Yung pre-adult. Yung pre-adult is a, a stage in transition between the larva and adult. So, lab diagnosis, syempre, we have to take into account the disease history and physical examination. So, tanungin yung patient, kumakain pa sila ng mga kilawin na crab or crayfish. And then, etiologic diagnosis of eggs and sputum or feces by sedimentation. And immunologic diagnosis for ectopic diagnosis. Immunologic means that we, uh, we'll try, we try to detect antibodies. Um, it is endemic. Uh, it is found globally, main continent, except for Europe. Well, social kasi. <laughs> and China, it says that China talaga. 23 provinces are, are uh, it is endemic in 23 provinces in China. But Philippines, unfortunately, meron then. So, Paragonimus Westerman infection occurs in China, Korea, oh, with Korea with the letter C, India, Japan, Laos, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Vietnam, Central West Africa, South America, such as in Ecuador, Peru, and Venezuela. Okay, principle of control. We have to treat patient with praziquantel. Lagi na, basta tandaan nyo guys, kapag flukeworm, praziquantel. Hygienic education, social construction, and economic refinement. Tell, um, we have to educate them um, not to uh, prevent, not to consume these crabs in sufficient liquid. Okay, so, moving on, uh, we have Several species of cystosome, but I told you already about the Mr. Yuji, kasi yung tatlo. The first three are the most common species, Japonicum, Mansonai, and Hematobium. 
Um, do you know that we can distinguish um, cystosoma egg by looking at the by looking at the ova? So first, um, this is the uh, cystosoma japonicum characterized by a uh, knob. So there's a knob. I hope you can see it. There's a knob here. Cystosoma mansona is characterized by lateral spine. Cystosoma hematobium is characterized by terminal spine. Okay? Lateral spine, mansonai. Hematobium, terminal spine. Japonicum, lateral knob. So, cystosomes are the blood fluke. Okay, so the disease is called cystosomiasis and snail fever and the second most prevalent disease worldwide. And it is non-operculated, so it requires only one intermediate host. And do you know what? The mode of transmission is by skin penetration, which means that if you swim or immerse your foot in a freshwater tainted, with cercaria, cercaria will penetrate you. You know why? Because the cercaria of cystosoma is fork tail and is capable of skin penetration. So, diagnostic stage would be the embryonated egg. So, do you know that um, cystosoma is the most romantic pair? Because once inside, uh, once found inside the bloodstream, uh, they are in copula. Okay, so that's why the, the description is the most romantic pair. So, males are shorter and more robust than female, but female is slender and long and can lay eggs up to eight times per day. So, the diagnostic feature is the presence of gynecophoric canal. So, gynecophoric canal is found in males. Is used by male in carrying the female. That's why it's called the most romantic pairs. So the eggs are bigger than the Ascaris egg with bottleneck appearance. And the cercaria is fertile. So diagnosis, um, stool exam, rectal biopsy, concentration technique, immunodiagnosis, intradermal test, because we have to check um, the site of skin penetration with the cercaria, immunohemagglutination, and the COPT, circumobile precipitin test, and ELISA. So, what are the common signs of cystosomiasis? Um, there would be dermatitis to cercarial penetration. Adult may live in the venules of the mesenteric vein. It will feed on whole blood. So, patient um, may experience hypochromic microcytic anemia. So, we have here um, the different species of cystosoma, Japonicum, Hematobium, and Mansonai. To differentiate, wow, Japonicum is found in China, Indonesia, Japan, and Philippines, Mansonai, Africa, and South America, Hematobium, Africa, and Middle East. So, Japonicum is the oriental blood fluke, Mansonai is the Manson's blood fluke, Hematobium is the vesical blood fluke. Japonicum is found at the superior mesenteric vein, okay, or the portal blood serum of the rectum, ah, sorry, of the intestine. Mansonai is found at the inferior mesenteric vein, okay, it is the rectal bloodstream. Cystosoma hematobium is found in, is found in, uh, urinary portal bloodstream, okay. So, cystosoma japonicum is known as the oriental cystosomiasis or the katayamas disease. Cystosoma mansonai is the intestinal bilargiasis or cystosomal um, dysentery. Cystosoma hematobium is the urinary bilargiasis or cystosomal hematuria. Cystosoma japonicum, uh, cystosoma japonicum's uh, first intermediate host are the Oncomelania snail, Oncomelania quadraci, Oncomelania hotpensis, which is, by the way, very common in the Philippines. 
For Mansona, it is Biophalaria planorbis tropicorbis with lateral spine. For Hematobium, Bulinus cysopsis with terminal spine. So lateral spine or knob, that is the ova. Okay? For Mansona, it is lateral spine. For Hematobium, it is terminal spine. So here I'm talking about the ova. Okay? The adult skin is smooth for jamponicum, coarse tuberculation for mansonai, fine tuberculation for hematobium. Number of testes, japonicum has six between 6 to 7, mansonai between 4 to 5, hematobium between 8 to 9. The location of the ovary is median for japonicum, anterior for mansonai, posterior for hematobium. So the uterus for Japonicum is long and well-developed. It is shorter for mansonai. It is longer for hematobium. Number of eggs. Japonicum will pass the most number of eggs, 50 to 100. Now, since japonicum is found in the urinary at the intestinal portal bloodstream, stool is considered as the best specimen. For mansonai, stool also is also possible because it is found at the rectal bloodstream, but rectal biopsy may also be utilized. But for hematobium, urine is considered as the best specimen. In fact, cystosoma hematobium is considered to be as the true urinary parasite. Okay? So, is there a difference uh, between um, uh, to, uh, between cystosoma and other monoecious dermatodes? Uh, actually, yes. Um, again, cystosomes are dioecious. You have a separate male and female, non operculated, and the cercaria is fork, fork tailed or bifurcated so that it can penetrate the host by skin because the mode of transmission is skin penetration. The adult would paras parasitize blood vessel. Then male is shorter but more robust. Ventral sucker is bigger than the oral sucker, and there are two parallel guts from form a blind cecum in the at the posterior end. There are seven testes in male and a single ovary, and gynecophoric canal is found in male to carry the female. Okay, so this is the gynecophoric canal, oral sucker, ventral sucker. This is the female's oral sucker, ventral sucker. So you have the ovary for female, and then test test for males. Two separate adults. So remember, cystosomes are not hermaphrodites. So this is the most romantic pair. Okay, cystosoma in copula. So this is the male, and female is inserted here at the gynecophoric, gynecophoric, gynecophoric canal of male. Another example of cystosoma in copula. Okay, so if you will be looking at the ova, so here is an example of a terminal lateral knob, cystosoma japonicum. Here's the fork-tailed cercaria. And then, you also have the mirosidium. Ah, uh, Neurocidium is the larvae inside the ova. Then this is the fork tail cercaria capable of skin penetration. Okay, so ah, that's, this one is a much better representation of the life cycle. So again, um, if someone defecates in the in fresh water, mansonai and japonicum um, ova will hatch. If someone urinates in fresh water, cystosoma hematobium will, will eventually hatch, releasing mirosidium. And then the mirosidium penetrates the snail. We now have the intermolluscan stage. So sporosis in snail will have successive generations and eventually become cercaria. Cercaria will eventually penetrate the skin. So, pag nag-swimming kayo sa river or yung mga magsasaka na walang chinelas and naka-immerse sa water supply or irrigation na may cercaria, o naglaba yung nanay sa river na may cercaria, so that's how you get infected.
So, Sarkaria will lose the tail. Ito kasi yung tail eh, yung fourth tail. And become cystos, cystosomulae. Okay? Inside our body. It will go to circulation and migrate to portal blood liver and mature into adults. We now have the paired adults migrate to the mesenteric venule of the brown rectum laying egg that circulates. Or if it's hematodium, it will go to the venous plexus of the blood. Okay. Do you know that um, there are also possibility of cercarial dermatitis due to avian cystosome? Avian cystosomes are actually um, the the cystosoma of migratory water birds, shorebird ducks, and they are being infected to cercaria. So they are found in water. But since you also uh, um, deep in water, there's a chance that you might get infected with animal with avian cystosome. However, since you are not a bird, you eat the, the cercaria will not develop into an adult. But there is dermatitis of the skin. So, they reside on mesenteric pain, and unlike other cystosoma, they would only require one um, intermediate host. Um, there's no metacercaria and radial stage, but there are two generation sparses. The infective stage is cercaria, and the mode of transmission is by skin penetration. So, here's an example of the adult, the young adult found at the mesenteric vein of the hamster on Comelania hepensis, the first intermediate dose. Well, the first mission, Sertaria. Appearance of egg is between 30 to 35 days and the longest lifespan of infection in untreated human is 35 years. Wow! The tissue egg, the egg can develop and live in tissue. So major the significance of tissue egg is that it will cause major pathogenic stage, inflammation, and granuloma around the egg. So the eggs are also important for diagnosis and evaluation of the parasite. Um, humans may develop concomitant immunity, which means that host carrying an initial, initial infection of adult cytosomes uh, will show the protection to a sarcarial challenge infection. And this protective immunity will disappear with eradication of cytosome in the host. Which means that uh, concomitant immunity means that once you are infected with adult, okay, you prevent other cytosomes from infecting you. However, this immunity is removed or would disappear once you're able to eradicate the cytosome. So somehow, it prevents for multiple infection because of the concomitant immunity. But not all ha, um, is capable of that immunity because we have the so-called immune evasion. Immune evasion, ability of systems of adult to evade the immune response. Okay? Evasion. You know how? Um, because the parasite um, uh, the acquire host antigen on its surface. So, have yung cercaria while it penetrates the skin. So, binabalutan niya yung sarili niya ng tissue ng host. So, there is a host-like antigen produced by the parasite. So, our immune system will be full thinking that this is not an antigen. Okay? Changing of tegument very quickly and parasite may inactivate or downregulate immune effectors. Um, cystosomiasis at different stage of life cycle, so cercaria, um, the mode of transmission is skin penetration. As a result, there could be dermatitis. And then, cystosomula. Cystosomula means that the tail is re already removed and the larvae are migrating again inside our body. And for adult, um, immunocomplex um, complication results to immunonephropathy, particularly its hematobium, kidneys may be destroyed. So, advanced cystosomiasis um, is characterized by 
portal hypertension and ascites. There are many fluids here because of the presence of the adults. Okay, so ito yung um, ascites, splenomegaly, enlargement of spleen, umbilical hernia, here, distended superficial abdominal veins. Transmission is direct penetration of skin by fortil sertaria. Um, the pathogenic potential is high based on warm population and location in veins, capability of eggs to erode, uh, to erode other. Okay? Clinical signs, none during the early stage, but it depends also on the number of worms. If it's low, um, there would be transient skin reaction kasi nga nag-penetrate yung sertaria. And then, characters may malay, fever, skin, rashes, cough, acute hepatitis, abscess, hepatomegaly, cardiomyopathy, or hematuria. Hematuria is common in cystosoma japonicum. Ah, sorry, cystosoma hematogium. Okay, so prevalence. It is common sa Philippines yung japonicum. Distribution of worldwide in tropical, subtropical, temperate regions of human infections. Nearly equal to prevalence of malaria. So, very common. Microscopic idea of ovine feces, urine, or vital specimen. Treatment is also prosequantel, but aside from prosequantel, we also have oxamnicine and vinarzil. So, cystosoma japonicum uh, may be uh, diagnosed through rectal biopsy, stool examination, and Immunodiagnosis, common signs, dermatitis, and then hypochromic microcytic anemia. Uh, I think this has already been discussed. Okay, so factors of transmission and prevention. Source of infection is patient and reservoir host and intermediate host is oncomelania. And the reason why there is an infection because of the contact with cercaria in Infected water. So, as a preventive measure, uh, we try to detect and, and treat patients and reservoir host elimination or control of oncomelania. Without the snail, life cycle will not be complete. Will not be completed. Protection of susceptible population and avoidance of contact with circular infected water, and prevention of water contaminated by human like soil. Okay. So, I think I will end my part one here because it's getting late. So, please uh, watch for the part two of the therapies. See you in part two. Bye.